Hi, my name is Bob West. I'm an assistant professor at EPFL in Switzerland, and I will talk to you about how to calibrate Google Trends time series. Google Trends is a tool for analyzing the popularity of Google search queries over time. In this example, we are tracking the query Guinness over the course of five years, which reveals that the popularity of Guinness spikes every March 17th, which is, of course, St. Patrick's Day. Since what people search for on Google tends to correlate with what they do in the real world, for example, search for Guinness and drink Guinness, Google Trends can be considered a sensor into what's going on in the world. And there has been a true research bonanza harnessing Google Trends for sensing world events in real time at scale, making visible what wasn't visible before, just like a microscope. Google Scholar returns over 4 million research papers for the keyword Google Trends, ranging from economics to finance to health to social science, etc., etc. Let's return to our Guinness example. Google Trends actually allows us to compare queries to one another. For example, if we add Heineken um, in red on this slide, we see that Heineken is less popular overall than Guinness and has a flatter curve. Also note the y-axis on this plot, which runs from 0 to 100. This is because time series are scaled by Google Trends such that the maximum value across all the displayed time series is mapped to 100. The reason is that the overall search volume on Google fluctuates. Google is more popular on some days than on others, so um, normalizing to the range of 0 to 100 fixes uh, that fluctuation, normalizes it out. But importantly, not only is the y-axis scaled to lie between 0 and 100, the values are also rounded to integer precision. And this is a huge problem if you want to do data science with Google Trends data. The problem becomes clear when we now add a third query, Murphy's Stout, which is another beer from Ireland, which is much less popular than Guinness and Heineken. Since the search volume for Murphy's Stout is at always less than 1% of the maximum achieved by Guinness, we end up with an all flat, completely uninformative time series shown in yellow on this slide. On the contrary, if we inspect the time series for Murphy's Stout on its own, it's shown in blue here, but it corresponds to the yellow curve uh, in, the, in the bigger chart, um, then we see that it is far from being all flat there are actually spikes uh, on St. Patrick's Day, similar to the spikes for Guinness. But when comparing Murphy Stout to Guinness, these details are completely washed out because of rounding errors. The purpose of this talk is to present to you our solution to this problem, Google Trends Anchor Bank. The key idea is this, if we want to compare two queries of vastly different popularity, such as Guinness and Murphy Stout, then, Instead of naively asking Google Trends to compare the two, we, chain, we can chain together multiple intermediate comparisons such that we can compare queries of vastly different popularity by transitivity. Here's an example. Instead of directly comparing Guinness to Murphy Stout, we can first compare Guinness to Heineken. That checks out. You see that the two time series are both meaningful. None of them is all flat. Then we can compare Heineken to Tecate, that checks out too. We can compare Tecate to Carlsberg, that checks out. And finally, we can compare Carlsberg to Murphy Stout. And all of these times, these comparisons have yielded meaningful time series. Nowhere is the curve made all flat because of rounding. And then afterwards, we can basically compare Guinness to Murphy Stout by stitching together the results from these uh, separate intermediate queries. I'm sure you find this idea very intuitive, but the question is, of course, how do we know which queries we should pick as intermediate queries? If you're curious to find out, please check out the paper on this. Instead of going into those details, I will focus on the high-level idea. Google Trends Anchor Bank consists of two phases. Phase one is executed once as an offline pre-processing step ahead of time. This phase finds an ordered list of anchor queries that span all levels of popularity. And all of these queries are calibrated against a common reference query. We call this list of queries the anchor bank. Here's an example of anchor bank, ranging from very popular queries, Budweiser, Miller Lite, down to very unpopular queries, such as Goodman and Eigenboy. Um, 
Um, and the reference query, as the reference query here, we use the most popular query, Budweiser. Once we have the anchor bank, we can use it to calibrate any arbitrary Google search query queue. This online phase performs a binary search in the anchor bank until it finds an anchor query to which the input query queue can be meaningfully compared without being compromised by integer rounding. The result will be the time series of the input query queue relative to the maximum value of the reference query, which would be Budweiser in this example. Here's an example. If we're given the query queue, we would first compare, compare it to the middle query in the anchor bank, Carlsberg. This would yield an uninformative time series for Q because it is rounded to all zero. Carlsberg is much more popular than Q. So we search recursively in the lower half of the anchor bank. We compare to the query Gutmann. And here we get a meaningful result. So boom, we're done. Because Gutmann has already been calibrated against the reference query Budweiser, we can now also calibrate input query Q against the reference query Budweiser. This slide shows the difference between the time series obtained from vanilla Google Trends versus the result obtained from Google Trends Anchor Bank. On the left, you see the time series for five Google queries as returned directly by Google Trends. As we see, rounding really mutilates those time series, such that some of them are mostly or even all flat, all zero. Google Trends Anchor Bank, on the other hand, gives us much higher granularity, revealing vastly more nuanced patterns of temporal variation. So the takeaway is that with vanilla Google Trends, you cannot compare search queries of vastly different popularity. With Google Trends Anchor Bank, GTAB, you can compare any set of search queries you wish. If you want to use Google Trends Anchor Bank in your own research, please do. We created an easy to use Python API that lets you calibrate Google queries in just a few lines of code. Thank you very much.